Hi everybody, this is Sandra Angela broadcasting live from Sandyland again. This is my fifth try tonight. I don't give up in case you haven't noticed. And so I was actually at my neighbor's house and I was broadcasting about what it's like to draw and paint on the road. So I thought, well, what better way to do that than to actually be on the road? But you know what? The internet didn't work. And I tried. This is my fifth post tonight. So hi, Betty. I'm back in the land of internet, back in my studio. And so now I'm going to be able to come to you live tonight and talk. Hi, Betty. Talk to you about all kinds of fun things like um, broadcasting on the road and what you do with Plan B. Because life is tending to be Plan B, hi Marianne, or Plan C, or D, or E, or F, you know, and if you can't learn how to be flexible and creative about what happens to you and just go with the flow, then you're going to have a problem with life. And that's the wonderful thing about being creative is that when you're a creative person, you just figure out a way to make it work. So when I was broadcasting downstairs, hang on, Jelly. <laughs> When I was broadcasting downstairs, um, the Wi-Fi wouldn't work on my tablet, so I switched to a phone. And then the Wi-Fi worked pretty well um, on my phone, and then it didn't. And so then I just went upstairs to where the Wi-Fi was working better. So when you're a creative person, it's awesome because you can make things good even when they aren't perfect. And you can still make things work. So. Tonight I'm going to be talking about how to draw and paint on the road and sort of what it's like to be a mobile artist. And nowadays we are mostly mobile. I mean, half of the time, you know, some of you are taking cruises or you're visiting your relatives or you're on vacation or you've gone to um, the park or the beach or, you know, you're sitting at an airport waiting for your airplane. And all these different circumstances require you to wait. And, you know, I feel like when you're waiting, it's wasted. You know, because why would you just sit there and not get anything done? So I carry my supplies with me everywhere. Everywhere. Even when I went out to the ranch for Christmas, I took my supplies. Because you never know. If, um, you know, the kids are going to get plain and they don't want to talk to their aunt and so I need to have something to do. Or um, didn't happen this time, but at least I had something in case. And I'm sitting waiting at the airport. Maybe the flight's been delayed or you have to get there really early because of security. And I can get, like, you know, a, a decent part of my drawing done just sitting at the airport. And then I also take my drawing on the airplane, too. Nobody's killed anybody with a pencil. And so I can actually bring my uh, graphite pencils onto the airplane. And so I get a ton of stuff done when I'm on the go. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that, how I do that today, and why it's so amazing to be a drawing artist. You know, like if you were an oil painter, forget it. You can't get turpentine through security. And, you know, the paints are messy. You can't paint on the airplane. But with um, graphite, which is what we're focusing on in here, you can take everything with you. And you only have a very small amount of stuff. So I'm going to talk a little bit first about the stuff that you take. We talked about supplies yesterday, but we didn't talk about traveling with supplies and how that works. And I have good news today. We found the carousel online that I use for my pencils, and I found a sketchbook that works with the grid kit. So I'm going to show you tonight how the grid kit works, too. So we've got a lot in store for us, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, it's silly, but I'm going to share a ton of things with you that are, you know, to me, a good way to travel. So today when I was out on the road, I took this. This is on our website, too. This is a container that I use for my water bottle. I carry water everywhere because it's really important to stay hydrated. And this is the water bottle that I use. We'll be putting this on the website probably tomorrow morning. 
but I use this because it's almost like a thermos and the water and the ice stay cold sometimes two days in a row I'll come back here and the ice is still cold it's still ice and so this is awesome if you need to keep drinks cold or you need to keep them hot you can take this with you and you've always got water you can refill it at a drinking fountain and so forth and um, artists need to have water so this is what I use on the road and I'll be putting this on Sandra's favorite stuff so you can see where to buy it and then I don't like to carry my water bottle around it has like a little hook here at the top but I don't like to do that that's kind of a pain in the neck so I would rather carry it in a container and so this is what I use so this has an adjustable shoulder strap which is really awesome you can make it any length that you want to and then um, I can put my keys right here on the side and I can clip them because there's a little clip here a little clip to take it on and off All right. and so I put my keys there um, I also carry this little protective whistle in case somebody obnoxious comes near me I can scare them away and then um, so I, I put that on my side and then the cool thing is I can actually fit my little wallet and I carry a small little wallet like this that has all my credit cards in it my driver's license and then you can open it up in here and there's money and and more cards and stuff like that so I don't really need a lot so that goes on one side of this and then it has a little pocket here where you can see I can stuff receipts or coupons or whatever so there's a little pocket where I can hide things and then I opt oh, this is velcro so it just snaps closed and then I put my phone in the other side so there's a little pocket here for the phone and I literally almost never carry a purse anymore I just throw this over my children I've got my water and I've got my wallet and I've got my phone and I've got my keys and I'm good to go and so people ask me about this stuff because I've learned how to travel so well and so I actually put this on Sandra's favorite stuff you can actually buy this little container for your water and like I said we'll get the water on there tomorrow so um, so that's kind of how I deal, deal with that then to go on the airplane or um, not even necessarily on the airplane I will actually um, even go to my cousin's house with this um, I like to look like an artist you told uh, I told you yesterday that it's all about the way you look as much as it is about you know the way you draw <laughs> for me I, I think it's important so we have this Monet's garden path I went there a couple summers ago oh my gosh Monet's garden is just epic you kind of feel like you're in the garden of Eden it's just birds and butterflies and I'm not even really a person that draws flowers but I mean I was motivated then it was just epic and so it's kind of fun for me to carry that garden with me and this has a zipper at the top so that way I can actually zip this up and I can put it under the airline seat so I don't have to worry about things spilling out and then this goes over my shoulder really and it's just the perfect height so that I don't get um, kind of cramps in my shoulders it's just the perfect length and so I carry this through the airport this is my carry this is my personal bag and then I have a carry-on suitcase that I bring as well and so I, I'm all set you know and then inside of this I can put my sweater I can put my scarf you know that I'm wearing to keep me warm or whatever and then I will put my clipboard that I showed you yesterday this is what I draw on when I'm sitting at the airport and I'm waiting and I you know I want to draw that gives me like a drawing board for my lap and then I take along this um, wonderful portfolio that I got in um, in uh, Italy and inside of that um, we talked a little bit about this yesterday I have my drawing stuff with me so I have the the plastic sleeve which is archival and won't damage my paper and then I have the drawing that I'm working on so I'm working on a little girl cuddling her kitty cat and then I take the um, the photograph as well so that I have them both in the same sleeve and that and I much prefer some people like to draw what they see on the road and I, I don't I want to draw what I want to draw 
So ahead of time, I will actually do peanut butter. Get out of there. He's in my art bag. He's he loves bag. He's like a bag cat instead of a bag lady. So anyway, um, peanut butter, stop. <laughs> I guess I need to get the water bottle out. So I will actually do the complete contour line drawing. I'm going to hold this up so you can probably see the lines. See how I put in all those lines first? That tells me where I'm going to shade. So when I'm home and I'm not around other people who can disturb me while I'm drawing, I will actually finish the contour line drawing so that I have lines everywhere I'm supposed to shade. And that's one of the hardest parts of the drawing is just doing the contour line drawing. And so I always finish that before I go on my trip. So that way, because that requires more concentration, I, I really can't do it when someone's talking to me. And so I really uh, love to, I love to be able to get that finished before I hit the road. And then that way when I'm on the road and I'm just shading, I, I'm interruptible. You know, people can ask me questions or ooh and ah about my art. And of course, I always carry business cards. Sometimes I even carry one of my books and I'll sell it to somebody on the airplane, <laughs> pays for my meal. And um, so anyway, uh, I, I put this in my bag as well. And then I also have this in my bag. And this is a plastic container that I can see through. And I like to be able to see through it so I know where stuff is. And that, that way I don't have to pull everything out. And, you know, you can buy, I think I bought this at Target. I mean, you can buy these all over the place. But um, I have my glasses, my reading glasses. I like to use those better instead of my bifocals. And then I like to have really cool containers to carry my pencils around. So when I was at High Clear Castle, which is where they filmed Downton Abbey, I bought this little pencil container, and then I carry it with me with the six degrees of hardness. And then I also love this one here. I bought this one at a local uh, Upstart and Crow bookstore, and I have my pencils in there as well. And so I usually carry two sets just in case something goes wrong and I accidentally leave one behind. Then I have my kneaded eraser. I showed you yesterday how you tear this apart in order to clean it. And then I keep my box of uh, eraser refills because it's really important to... Um, have those and I'm going to show you tonight how to use that eraser and um, then I carry my eraser as well inside this bag and then I carry a little um, zipper bag and I bought this in London again I always like to buy things like just everything in my life is something special I don't I just buy this down at Walgreens or some store I want to use something that I bought when I was on a fun trip and when I was in London, we had a really good time with my um, atil my private student that I gave an art and culture tour. So I put my batteries in here, and these are backup batteries for the battery eraser and also for my sharpener. And then I will carry a little charger for my phone in here as well. And then I also will carry a um, sharpener that's not battery operated, just in case for some reason... Uh, my batteries die and the backup batteries don't work and I carry a little toothbrush and some toothpaste in that as well and it's it's really light and that's all I need you know this is it if you were an oil painter <laughs> you would need a tribe of pygmies to follow you around with all your supplies but this just throws into my bag and it's super easy and I just put it you know zip it up and I can stick it under the airline seat mm -hmm. and I am good to go. So, and then you look really cool. <laughs> you know, you gotta look cool, gotta look like an artist, right? So it starts conversations and if you're the kind of person who wants to sell your work, it's important to start conversations with people who might buy your work or people who are interested. You know, only 9% of the people in the United States use art supplies. And so that means that 91% of the people you're going to run into in this country don't know anything about art. And so you're kind of like a zoo creature. Like they want to know the mating and dating behaviors of zoo creatures and all that stuff. And they're curious about artists. And so they will ask you questions. So carry the stuff with you that you want to do to promote. Um, I, I met a lady, a flight attendant, on one of my flights. I think it was to Europe. And... Um, 
she can fly anywhere, so she flew to San Diego and took a class for me. You know? So it was because I had my business card with me that, and I gave it to her because she was curious about my drawing. And people love watching me draw on the airplane because when I first start, I just have a line drawing and it's just a blank piece of paper. And usually by the end of the flight, the drawing is either 50% done or 70% done. And so they just get to watch it come off the paper. And they love that. They just get so excited. They're like, oh my gosh, did you see what she's doing? It's just amazing. So anyway, um, that's a great way to travel. And I am very um, careful about what I pack so that I make sure that I'm really comfortable on the airplane. I always want to take a scarf so that I can, you know, wrap up and be warm. You always want to take an extra sweater, a lightweight sweater, and put it in your bag as well. It all fits in the bag. And um, these bags, by the way, are on sandrasfavoritestuff.com. I'll post that again when I post the header for this video, um, where you can go to buy all the things that I'm showing you. And so um, we kind of keep you up to date about where you can buy all this stuff, and, and we help you, you know, kind of outfit yourself so that you're using stuff that's going to work instead of buying stuff and then having to replace it because it doesn't work and using the wrong papers and pencils and all of that. So yesterday I didn't have an opportunity to show you how to use the grid kit. So I'm going to do that today. And um, I couldn't find the... Um, my warehouse is two hours from me, so... and we're closed over the holidays except for me. I'm in here broadcasting. But, um, so I wanted... Uh, I couldn't drive to the warehouse and, and find the, the tablet that I'm recommending for you but this has the same kind of paper in it and it's not big enough, it's too small for our purposes because the grid kit is 8.5 by 11 and so you want to have a tablet that's 8.5 by 11 but the concept is the same and so um, I'm going to show you here, I'm going to try this a little awkwardly to show you how the grid kit looks through the paper and as I said before I was the um, contributing editor at Art Materials today and also at, uh, I had my own column in my, Michael's Arts and Crafts magazine and so I was the authority on supplies and it was my job to test everything. And so I tested all the supplies and found out which papers were best, which pencils work best and then I, all the stuff that I picked for you that's at sandrasfavoritestuff.com, all that stuff has been road tested. And so you know it's going to work really well. So I tested millions of different kinds of papers, and this is the only one that I could find where you can actually see the grid kit, the grid lines through. I'm going to get that close to the camera so you can see that you can see the grid lines. You can see it better in person than you can on this camera right here, but you can see the grid. So you just put the grid underneath your paper. Obviously, your tablet would be 8.5 by 11, so this, this whole grid would be covered. And then you go ahead and take the acetate grid that is the corresponding size. So this one is a half an inch, and so is the one that I put under my paper. And then you can go square by square on your drawing to figure out how to draw it accurately. And one of the most accurate ways to draw is to do things upside down. And so when we put the grid kit on it and we turn it upside down and we make sure that the lines are intersecting a complicated section, now that's dividing. Do you see that this grid is dividing that eye? I'm pointing it on my camera. It's dividing that eye so it's not an eye to us anymore. It's being divided and I can tell where to put it. I can see that the eyes in this case are even. Sometimes they're not. If your head is tilted the line will go, one eye will be above the line and one eye will be below. So the grid really helps you to line things up. And then if you're having trouble really seeing the shapes, you can just grab a, a window, which is my magic trick, and you can put it over just the section that you're working on, and that way you're not thinking of this as an eye or a nose or a mouth you're thinking of this as shapes and when you draw the shapes you're going to improve your accuracy this is explained in, in incredible detail on the videos inside pencil drawing college so I'm not going to belabor it but I just kind of wanted to tell you how that works 
Um, we used to sell the grid. We don't anymore because um, we're not selling, you know, we're selling those bags, but not many supplies anymore. But you do get the grid kit for free when you, if you make it into Pencil Drawing College. We, we're going to have a few spots opening up in mid-January. We have a couple of people who finished the program, and so that's going to open up a few spaces for some new people to come in. And um, so we're going to announce that in mid-January when, um, when the broadcasts are over. So be sure that if you're watching this broadcast, you've already signed up at PencilDrawingCollege.com because that's where you're going to get all the notices when the um, doors open for registration and you know it's going to give you all the notices like today we changed the time I was broadcasting at 6 and now I'm going to be broadcasting at 6.30 I mean 7.30 except when the internet doesn't work today it didn't end up being till 8 just because the internet was giving me fits and that's okay I'm, I'm fine with that now, one of the big advantages of being able to draw on the road is that you can accomplish a lot. As I was saying in one of the broadcasts that I did, the, the first four broadcasts that I did tonight when I was trying to connect to the Internet, um, I said that um, I was when Scripps Women's Hospital, they built a birthing center. It's in a very wealthy neighborhood. And um, they made it like the Ritz. It's like going to a five-star hotel to have your baby. I mean, they had beautiful um, wood floors, and they had hand-carved wooden um, cribs, and, you know, they were commissioning original beautiful art and stuff like that. And I didn't even know about the contest. I, I hadn't heard of it. And my, but they called my agent because they, they saw my work at, at Kaiser Hospital, and so uh, they called and they said, please have her enter because we want her to win. <laughs> and it was like, amazing. I didn't even enter this contest. They begged me to enter. And then they were only going to choose three pieces of art from every artist. And they liked my work so much, they commissioned me to do nine pieces for the birthing center. This is like being, having nine p pieces at a five-star hotel. And it was very prestigious, and the money was nice, and, and it was all amazing, especially because just a few months earlier, I was a really bad artist. But I had studied with a master, and he taught me how to correct all my mistakes with the advice that he had given me. And so now I was the superstar that was being approached. I wasn't even entering contests, and not only did I win a contest that I didn't enter, um, I I won in spades, like 300%, you know, instead of three pieces, they chose nine. So, um, anyway, so it was pretty amazing that, um, it's pretty amazing that I, you know, was doing really well, but now I had to do nine pieces, and I only had eight weeks. And luckily, a couple of them were already finished. They were just pieces I had done, and they, they wanted to buy them, but I had to do some commission work. And I had flights to New York and Tennessee, and I, that was when I was traveling all over the world because people couldn't study with me live like you're doing. And so, because um, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have iPads, we didn't have iPhones, we didn't have tablets. I mean, the, I don't even think, I don't know if the internet was invented. It was a long time ago. And so, um, so anyway, <clears throat> I had to com complete some pieces. So by taking my pencils and packing it in that one little bag, that could hold my lunch, my wallet, my, you know, everything, all my art supplies, I was able to get two drawings done on airplanes, you know. So here I am earning money with time that would normally have been wasted. You know, in those days they didn't even have movies to watch, so you kind of sat there and twiddled your thumbs or read a book, you know, and I was using time wisely. And so when you um, make yourself adept at traveling with your art, you can get so much done. After the fire happened and I, the 2300 homes burned down in one day in San Diego and both my home and my business burned on the same day and so I lost 900 pieces of art and all the masters from my books and videos and television shows and all of that stuff and so I had to rebuild my company and create new courses and so I had, you know, drawing takes time, and so I developed this attitude of traveling with my art. 
I literally, if I was anywhere more than five minutes, I would pull out the drawings and get something done. In the doctor's office, in the airport, on the airplane, at my cousin's house. You know, when I was waiting anywhere, I would always pull out my art and I would always draw. And by doing that, I literally finished, I think it was, let's see, I think it was 10 courses with like 70 pieces of art in the space of like two years. That's toast. <laughs> I don't know why she's coming to the broadcast tonight. Usually it's peanut butter, although he's been attacking my, my bag down there, but I guess she's standing in for him. So anyway, um, so because I developed a traveling philosophy that art goes with me everywhere, then I was able to accomplish a ton of work and I was able to get back up on my feet and then all, I meet people when I'm traveling because um, you know it's something that you can talk about when you see strangers you don't know what to say and uh, when someone sees you drawing they can they feel like they can talk to you it's kind of like when you have a dog people talk to you or if you have a baby people talk to you and so it started conversations and like I said I got clients sometimes I would sell a course or they would fly across the states to study with me or this one millionaire hired me for a, uh, to do a week of tutoring for him in his villa in Florida. And Anthony Robbins, I don't know if you've heard of the motivational speaker, but he hired me to fly to Venice, Italy to teach for four days on the Grand Canal. Tough assignment, but someone had to do it. And so um, my reputation kept building and I was handing out cards everywhere I went. And that's one of the best ways to build your reputation as an artist is to be out there interacting with the public, handing out your cards, doing what you do. You know, they're fascinated. They, they think of artists as zoo creatures. And so they're fascinated at watching you. And they're excited when they see the line drawing on your page. And then at the end of the flight, it's almost a finished piece of art. And so it's very exciting for the public to interact with you. And it's one of the best ways for you to get your name out there, you know, and to meet the people that you may end up um, doing a commission for and so forth and so on. So I'm going to end the broadcast um, today with a little bit of a motivational speech because I think it's really important to build our success first in our mind. And believing that you can do it is a huge, huge part of success. Uh, many people grow up with the idea that only gifted people can do art and it's just there's nothing farther from the truth. Actually, I, I would say 90, maybe 97 percent of my students don't have talent. <laughs> and that's been for 28 years. You know, 28 years I've been working with people who have no talent. Oh, Peanut Butter finally joined us. And um, so I don't, it doesn't daunt me at all to work with somebody who doesn't have talent or someone who has a little talent but they don't have enough training to look like a master. Because even if, even the masters apprenticed with other masters and that's how they became the next master. They apprenticed with the people who already knew how to do it instead of wasting decades trying to figure it out from a book. And so um, when you're working with a master directly, you get that feedback. So then you know what you're doing wrong and that way you can correct things and um, oh Lori says I'm one of the 98% without talent. That's, I don't know Lori, you're pretty talented but whether you're talented or you're not talented doesn't matter in Sandyland. We literally make masters out of people who are awful <laughs> because I was awful so I know how to get there from awful to amazing from mediocre to master, I, I did that. And so I teach you how that happens. And we're going to be doing more of that, um, talking about that in here. I'm starting with kind of the preliminaries, like how to stop. Peanut butter, stop. Um, I'm, I started, uh, the first day I started with how you, with the difference between rich artists and poor artists and the mindset that sets you up for success because it all begins here in your mind. And then the second day I talked all about supplies and what, how to get the best stuff and how to organize your studio. And then today I talked about how to be an artist on the go. And so 
you have to take the steps to become a successful artist. You don't just enroll in the local community college with a local Yoko who's barely better than you. Um, because when you copy mediocre, you're going to be a little less mediocre than that person. You know, um, if you're copying a master, you're going to be maybe a little less than the master. That's a lot better category. And so, um, whether you're talented or not talented, whether you're, um, you know, old or young, it doesn't matter. I, I, the youngest I teach is little girls need to be at least 9 or 10 and little boys need to be 10 or 11 because they don't get their fine motor skills until that age. And so you don't want them to have early failure. So uh, from I always say from 9 to 90, you know, I can handle you. And I should say 91 now because my oldest student is 91. And so, um, and she started with me at 70, at age 70. And, and literally within the first year, her work was so successful, she was winning top awards. And she started with stick figures. She was winning top awards, and she's won tons of awards. And she's been on TV. <laughs> Peanut butter. She's been on TV, and she's been in magazines and books and videos and international webinars and uh, just all. She's had massive, massive success, prestigious galleries and all kinds of commissions and so forth. And she started as a stick figure artist at age 70, okay? So, <laughs> top that. <laughs> so anyway, it's never too late to start um, drawing and we're gonna be showing you a few more techniques. Tomorrow I'm gonna have a chance to demonstrate some of the, you know, uh, working with the different strokes and working with the different tools and kind of showing you how to, how to work on that. So the, the most important thing for you to remember today is that you literally need to build a plan. You don't just enroll in a course with a local Yoko who's not very good because you're going to be a little less than not very good. <laughs> you want to study with a master and um, you want to make sure that you start building your mind with commitment. You need to say to yourself, I'm committing to this financially. I'm committing to this time-wise, I'm committing to this in my mental capacity, and I'm committing to this come what may. Because this year I had a lot of stuff go wrong, and I didn't change my plans at all. Because most of the time when you're choosing, you're making your choices in life, you're choosing between good and better. You're not choosing between good and bad, because both of your options are good. But one is better. And the better option is to make your dreams come true because then when you get, you know, as you start to age, you don't feel like you've wasted your life. You know, it's the most worst thing is to come to the end of your life and say, I wish I had. That's not a good phrase. So you need to make a mental commitment and it, this is a good time to do it. This time of year is a good time to do it and not as a resolution. Don't do that. Just decide that you're going to use a roadmap to get to success and you're going to be successful January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December and in December, like me, I at the end of the year because I live intentionally I can say literally every year I did the things I wanted to do this year I took stuff off my bucket list because I live intentionally and I make choices to do the things that make me grow. It's really, really important, especially the older you get, but no matter what age you are, it's important to exercise your mind. Um, when I was drawing so much, I sat in the chair a lot and I didn't realize that you start to lose your ability to move if you don't move. And it's the same with your brain. You know, your brain can atrophy, especially if you're retired and you don't have challenges in your day. Then it, your brain can atrophy if you just sit and watch television or just sit and read books or whatever or knit. You're, you're not growing or pushing yourself or exercising the muscles in your brain. Well, with art, you are. I have a student who had a stroke at age 50 and he had to quit his job because um, 
he all of a sudden, you know, couldn't function with his left brain. And so he came to me to learn how to draw on the right side of the brain. And when I started teaching him, he went from really, I mean, he was one of the worst artists I've ever had. And he became so successful that he was able to do photorealistic renderings of his entire family that were just epic. But here was the really good thing. He actually lived another 30 years. His family thought he was going to die when he had to retire. And it, his life was just so unchallenging. You know, there wasn't, you're used to getting up and getting something done every day. And so by coming to my classes and exercising his brain, his right brain became robust. And um, he had challenges. And he, he told me one time, he said, I just love this class because I can't get it right every time. You know, he, I have to keep trying and trying and trying. And that challenge is so exciting. And it, there's so much to learn. You almost feel like you can never stop learning. And so he just kept his brain active. And he kept it fully alive. And another uh, student of mine called me from New Jersey and said, he wanted to thank me for giving me, him his life back. And I said, you know, that's puzzling. Tell me what you mean. And he said, um, he's bipolar, which is manic depressive. And so he had so much trouble with manic energy that he literally had to work two jobs, 16 hours a day, because he was so manic, he had to do that to siphon off the energy. Well, when he took my drawing course, he calmed down so much because art is very calming that he was down to working one job so he only had to work eight hours a day so he said you gave me my life back can you imagine like eight hours times five I gave him 40 hours a week back because I taught him how to chill you know going into the drawing brain just makes the stress disappear and you just forget there are no boogeymen in there when you're sleeping you can process the stress by grinding your teeth or tossing and turning or uh, having nightmares but when you're in the serenity zone which is where we are when we draw you literally don't there are no boogeymen in there it's literally like rebooting your brain and so doing art is just good for the body mind and spirit I call it a spa for the brain you know, or aerobics for the brain. It's both of those. And so it's just one of the healthiest things you do, especially if you're retired and you're older and you need a challenge. And so it's really important for you to keep active, keep active in your brain, keep active in your body, you know, keep active so that you don't, you know, if they say if you move it or lose it. And that's really very true. So I'm super excited that I got a chance to be with you tonight, and um, I'm sorry that the technology didn't work the first five times, uh, four times, but the fifth time it worked, and we never give up here in Sandyland. So I want to let you know that I'll be here again tomorrow at 7.30. I broadcast every day except Sunday. Sunday's my day of rest. And so we'll be broadcasting every day except Sunday between now and January 11th. And um, that's about the time that we're going to be opening a few spots in Pencil Drawing College for the lucky few that get um, inducted into that. And so I have a philosophy, and I always sign up with this every time because I can't stand mediocrity. I remember when I was mediocre. It was just embarrassing. Um, and I don't like to be mediocre. So I worked with masters until I became one. And I learned that it's just absolutely worth it to go for the gold. So remember, when you're aspiring to what you want to happen, you need to believe in miracles and you need to believe that you can be the best you can be. And I always sign off with this saying, there will be miracles. There will be miracles when you get engaged with your dreams. I'll see you tomorrow. This is Sandra Angelo broadcasting live from Sandyland. Bye for now.